The anterior abdominal wall are supplied by the lower intercostal, subcostal, ilionguinal, and irohypogastric nerves in a segmental manner. The lower intercostal nerves run deep to the costal margin and pass to the abdomen. In the abdomen, they run superficial to transversus abdominis. The upper nerves run between the transversus abdominis and rectus abdominis, while the lower nerves run between the transversus abdominis and internal oblique. At the mid level, the nerves give their lateral branches which supply the anterior abdominal wall muscles and overlying skin lateral to the navel line. Note, the lateral branches of the subcostal and iliohypogastric nerves supply the lateral aspect of the upper side. The intercostal nerves end as anterior branches deep to the rectus abdominis, then they pierce the rectus abdominis. They supply all abdominal muscle and overlying skin medial to the navel line. With the exception of ilionguinal and iliohypogastric, all these nerves are too small to be seen by the ultrasound. Therefore, their block rely on accurate identification of the muscles and fascial planes. Rectus abdominis is a paramedian longitudinal muscle. Of the umbilicus, the two recti are separated. A rhomboid shape extraperitoneal fat lies deep to them. In the subcostal or epigastric region, the transversus abdominis lies deep to the rectus abdominis especially laterally. At more inferior level, the rectus abdominis is enveloped by anterior rectus sheath and posterior rectus sheath. The plane between the rectus abdominis and its posterior sheath is called rectus sheath plane. Rectus abdominis has tendinous intersections at which the muscle attaches to its anterior sheath and become widely separated from the posterior sheath. So the rectus sheath plane at this point are wide. Below the umbilicus, the two recti muscles meet each other at the midline, and the inferior epigastric vessel can be seen within the rectus sheath plane. Lateral to rectus abdominis, the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis can be seen. The fascia transversalis lines the transversus abdominis. Nerves run deep to the internal oblique in the transversus abdominis plane, which is known as TAP. Internal oblique is identified by being the thickest muscle medially. Laterally, the external oblique becomes thicker. Posteriorly, the internal oblique extends to the quadris lumborum, while the transversus abdominis ends at the mid axial line, leaving the transversalis fascia just deep to the internal oblique. This plane is known as transversalis plane. Note at this region, the extraperitoneal fat is thickened and may be mistaken as a muscle. In surgeries in the subcostal or epigastric region, we prefer the subcostal block. The probe is placed parallel to the costal margin and tilted laterally to identify the rectus abdominis and its deeper transversus abdominis. Local anesthetic is injected between them. In lower paramedian surgery, such as exploration or paramedian hernia, we prefer rectus sheath block, where local anesthetic is placed between the rectus abdominis muscle and its posterior sheath, as lateral as possible. The probe may be placed vertically. In surgeries lateral to the nipple line, we do tap block where local anesthetic is injected deep to the internal oblique. The inguinal region is supplied by the subcostal ilionguinal and iliohypogastric nerves. These nerves run anterior to the quadratus lumborum, then in the transversalis plane, then in tap between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis. Lastly, the internal oblique ends, leaving the nerves deep to the external oblique. At the inguinal ligament, the nerve slides deep to the external oblique just medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. For inguinal surgeries such as caesarean section, hernia, iliac bone graft, and also in hip surgeries with a lateral approach, these nerves can be blocked using the QL block, transversalis, or selective block at the tap. We prefer QL block. The link of the QL block technique is in the comments below. In the transversalis block, the local anesthetic is injected between the internal oblique and transversalis fascia posterior to the transversus abdominis. This is actually QL1 block. Finally, you have a gastric 
just you place the lateral in the uh, lateral to the rectus abdominis and vertically and you can identify the three muscles and slowly you go laterally until you find the iliac crest just close to the iliac crest you can find the ilionguinal iliohabigastric vessel in the tab between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis the ilionguinal iliohabigastric nerves can be seen follow this nerve slightly posteriorly the abdominal muscles depth, thickness, and ecogenicity are markedly affected by the gender, age, PMI, and exercise. In obese, you may need a curved probe to perform the above blocks. For one surgery, different unilateral or bilateral abdominal wall blocks may be needed.